to speak or not to speak. Hi, my name is Bill and today we're going to talk about the brain and speech. Language is one of the fundamental bases of human intelligence and key part of human culture. It allows us to share our thoughts, feelings and ideas. It has the power to build societies but also tear them down. By learning a language, it means you have mastered a complex system of words, grammar and structure to effectively communicate with others. It certainly seems very complicated. So, how does our brain do it? Let's dig into the principles of it. The areas of the brain connected with language are usually much more developed in one brain hemisphere than the other. Therefore, this is called the dominant hemisphere. In about 95% of all people, the left hemisphere is the dominant hemisphere. However, if this dominant hemisphere is severely damaged in early childhood, usually the opposite side will eventually develop dominant characteristics. Let's now see where the areas responsible for the language activities are located and what they actually do. The primary language areas are arrayed along the sylvian fissure of the dominant hemisphere. The major area for language comprehension is called Wernicke's area and is located in the upper posterior part of the temporal lobe. For instance, the written or spoken words are understood thanks to Wernicke's area. After severe damage in Wernicke's area, a person might hear perfectly well but still be unable to arrange the words into a coherent thought. Likewise, the person might be able to read the words from a printed page but still be unable to recognize the meaning they convey. The speech is relatively normal and sometimes patients talk extensively. However, what they say makes little sense, like they speak in a foreign language. Next, we have the angular gyrus region, which is located posterior to Wernicke's area. This is important for the initial processing of reading. Specifically, the angular gyrus processes the information from the words that are read in such a way so that they can be converted into their auditory forms in Wernicke's area. Another region is Broca's area, which is located near the primary motor cortex. Here is where the motor patterns for the control of the larynx, limbs, tongue and other accessory muscles of speech are planned. Severe damage in Broca's area makes the speech slow and words are difficult to come by, although the patient knows exactly what he or she wants to say. We can now follow together the neural pathways that are activating our brains when we have a conversation. The sequence is the following. Reception of the sound signals in the primary auditory cortex. Interpretation of the words and formation of the thoughts to be spoken in Wernicke's area. Transmission of the signals from Wernicke's area to Broca's area. Activation of the motor programs in Broca's area which initiates the appropriate movements of the lips, tongue and larynx to produce speech. Transmission of appropriate signals into the motor cortex to control the speech muscles. While reading out loud, the process is the same, except for the fact that the initial receptive region is the primary visual cortex rather than the primary auditory cortex. Then the information passes through the angular gyrus region and finally reaches its full recognition in Wernicke's area. From here, the sequence is the same as for having a conversation. So, that's what our brains do when we communicate. Complicated? Maybe. Interesting? Definitely.